Hi, good to see you. In this tutorial, I want to show how you can gain control over your ground shadows, which can be especially helpful when you are doing a product rendering that needs to go on a wide background and there needs to be no visible edges of the image, such as images that would go in a brochure on a wide background, maybe for a web shop or a PowerPoint presentation or something like that. And it can sometimes be hard to get the uh, ground shadow to behave the way you want, as it uh, tends to, to bleed to the edges of the image and clearly show the, the edges of the image. To demonstrate what you can do about it, I have created this quick scene of this Eames rocker chair that I downloaded on the dementivat.com page, which I recommend you to check out if you don't know it. And I have applied some basic materials. I have changed the stand up environment to this three panel straight. And I have changed the background color to a pure white color. If I find the angle that I want for the rendering, I should be good to go, right? So let's try this. Just let it rest up a few seconds and then take a screenshot of this. Put it on the desktop. Looks good, but if I go to Photoshop, load in the image and start placing it side by side, oh, like this, the issue quickly becomes apparent that there's a clear distinction between these images. The way I've seen people deal with this is to add a layer mask to the images, take a soft brush and start to paint the way around the edges like this and this. I mean, it works quite well, but it's an extra step and you might have hundreds of these images that you need to do, so it can be quite time consuming to fix these issues. So let's look at a way to do it inside KeyShot. First step here is to add a ground plane to your scene. So go to Edit, Add Geometry and pick the ground plane. Now double click anywhere on the ground to open up the material properties for this ground plane. What we're going to do is to take advantage of the opacity channel of this ground plane material and as a texture add in the occlusion texture. What it does is to look for any places where there are another piece of geometry uh, close to this material and where that happens it adds in a black color. This is where the, uh, the material is occluded. To show this a bit more clear I can open up the material graph and pick the occlusion node and turn on the color information. So here you see where the uh, the two pieces of geometry meets up, the ground plane and this rugger. It creates a black shade. Right now we have a radius of 1, so if we increase that to, for example, 10, this happens over a larger area. Because we have this occlusion as an opacity map, what is black becomes transparent. So you see we get this white halo effect. And we want the opposite. So to do that, we need to do it here or close down this material graph. And in the opacity mode of the occlusion texture, you go and change the color to inverse color. And now you only have the shadow right beneath the places where the chair touches the ground. If you want to make this shadow more apparent, you can go in and 
adjust these bias settings and for example if you turn up the normal bias in this case you will get a more pronounced shadow you can also extend the radius and if you want the fall off to be more soft you can adjust this fall off slider but i think this is great so let's let it rest up for a few seconds this is fine for this example so output the rendering and let's go into Photoshop and load it in to see the difference. Let's place it on top. Oops. Like so. So now we have no clearly visible edges right from the beginning. The thing is that this occlusion opacity trick also takes away the shadow here in the middle because there's so much distance from the seating to the ground plane. So if you want to retain that shadow as well, there's another way to do it. Instead of using occlusion as a texture, you can go ahead and use a color gradient. And First of all, change this color to black. And instead of a planar gradient type, we want to do a spherical. And you can see we have that right here in the center, very small. Put this up to maybe 50. And we get this gradient of the shadow going from the center and outwards. By adjusting these color pins, it's possible to adjust how the uh, gradient should fade. So we want it to be the full shadow like towards the edge and then close at the, the border we want it to fade. The important thing here is that it stops fading before the edge of the actual image. So it could be something like this. And again, I'll just let it rest up for a few seconds. Like this, take a screenshot, call it number three. And if we then again load it into Photoshop, like so, we have another version. So here and here you see the occlusion option, and here and here you see the uh, the gradient option. So that's two ways to get more control over your ground shadow. If you found this helpful, as always, please subscribe, give a thumbs up and share it with your best friend. That's something that I would really appreciate. Thank you and take care.